Hello, I'm Alex Pulowski, and everything sucks today. Uh, mm. <laughs> Alex is under the weather, so I'm going to be your host mm -hmm. from the bullpen, still from the right side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to be taking over driving the engine of the show, which I'm sure will go extremely smoothly. Oh, not sure. weird at all. But we are going to do a couple of things to help Alex, who really shouldn't even be here. But we're letting him get away with it because there's so much to talk about on NXT there's tonight. But so much to talk about. Get in those super chats. Get in those humper chats. And please leave a thumbs up on this video. It helps people find us in the algorithm. Um also, subscribe to FightfulSelect.com because Corey Brennan, who's about to jump in in a minute here, has been killing it. Absolutely killing it on the Fightful mm -hmm. Select scoops thread that we are getting basically every <laughs> Tuesday now, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Except for the tape Tuesdays because he's such a right. coward. But he, um, no, he is. <laughs> a couple of things. We're going to try and keep the jukebox limited to just Dusty Roads today because that's Alex's favorite. So if you want to get your jukebox in, you can, but it has to be as Alex's favorite. We might... We might even come in under two hours because Alex might. is not feeling. We might, well. honestly, yeah. So, um, but let's be real, it's us. So who knows? But we're gonna bring yeah. on Corey Brennan to talk about a few things, including the reintroduction, the re-debut in a way of Sean Spears coming as Sean Spears and not Ty Dillinger. We're gonna talk about that and a couple of other things that he has heard, as well as some additional scoop skis that he has had alex feeling like a perfect 10 over there clearly but Corey, yep. how you doing i'm great I'm, I'm really cowardly apparently so that's <laughs> just one thing and, uh, uh, it's a bit hard to get scoops when nothing's happening oh so suddenly i mean yeah. people tell us to make up news all the time yeah, oh I yeah yeah they sure do yeah yeah <laughs> so hope you're doing okay alex i'm better than i could be so that's there true. Better than than the rest of the household, I'm told. Yeah. So we will we'll hopefully <laughs> yes. keep things going in that direction. But Corey, happy to have you back on here. Everybody loved you and your Irish accent last time you were on. <laughs> Don't be weird yeah. about it. It's just an Irish accent. Alan does, Alex does eight more accents in that show. Where's right. the love for that? Mm -hmm. Okay, but um, we're very happy to have you back on to talk about the Sean Spears news because you said keep an eye on that Ridge Holland uh, mm -hmm. segment with good yeah. reason and you said there was some other stuff that you wanted to talk about so let's start with uh the sean spears return i think a lot of people self-included were speculating on who this might be with these vignettes uh immediately we know sean spears is a liar he has one face not three i don't know why he's pretending but um this name was not really in the mix i think a lot of people kind of just had that on the back burner we know his wife is pregnant with their second kid I kind of assumed he could go to TNA because that just felt like a fit to me. Um, but him coming back to NXT, I think, is a, a really cool thing here. It's definitely a good lift for the brand. I've always been a, a Ty Dillinger gal myself. Um, but everybody was thinking in terms of Tama Tonga, maybe this is a repackaging for Boa, Dante Chen, and Wendy Chu. Like, what this could be because of the mysterious nature of it. And we get the chairman back, Sean Spears. Um, any additional information or details you want to provide about that? Um, first of all, like I, I, I said on uh, X there a little bit ago, just said that like um, early on when this vid, these visionaries started, I was told that not to be guaranteed that it'd be a Japanese talent because everyone was kind of speculating it was going to be Julia. It's going to be, as you guys said, t uh, a reinvigorated Ten Sha or something like that. Um, yeah. But I, with regards to this uh, with Sean Spears, uh, one thing I was told was that he signed a couple of weeks before those visionettes started. So these visionettes were created in with him in mind. Mm. Um, on top of that as well, then, uh, as it is mentioned in the Fight for Select post, uh, Sean provided it. AEW sources did say that Spears was let out of his contract early, so he could sign with NXT. So that's a big, that's a big thing as well. Um, a small detail as well from uh, just today, they kept it the very, very secretive again, wasn't listed on rundowns. No one was listed to be working with Ridge. It was listed as a solo promo, no interrupted interruptions. Shawn Michaels actually played the role of Spears in rehearsals right down to hitting Ridge with the chair. So I think that's a funny image to for people to kind of <laughs> think about. Different Shawn, uh, a different yeah, Shawn for sure. <laughs> for me, I'm just imagining... Uh, HPK just doing his whole uh, every taunt he has and everything while he's doing it, but that's just me. Um, 
so yeah, with Spears, it, it, and I was told to expect that he will, as it was mentioned on commentary with Vic Joseph, that he will be referred to as Sean Spears. He won't be Ty Dillinger. He won't be doing the 10 gimmick as much as I'm sure that's going to disappoint you, Alex. Um, he, it, it, I was told to expect something very in line with what he was running at first in AEW, his yeah. original chairman gimmick, not why he was running towards the end when he was back being a babyface. Um. So yeah, all all in all, with Spears as well as the, it, it, lately for the, the these angles, these big angles like the trick and the mellow angle, and so on, it, it's been really, really, really secretive in NXC over the last few months with these angles, and it's continuing that way. Um, you did mention Tamatonga, Kate. Um, and obviously, there's been a lot of reports coming out today about him. I would I asked around about that tonight, and uh, there's there's not a lot of people in NXT that feels he will be going through the NXT system. A lot of people do feel he is going to go straight to the main roster. Now, I don't know if that's a guarantee. I don't know if he if plans could change or anything like that. But at least right now, the feeling in NXT is they won't really get much time with him, if any at all. That kind of makes sense because there are things that he could do bloodline adjacent. There are things he could do bullet club adjacent, or he has the look already. He's developed. He's been working new Japan for years. Right. So um, if the purpose of NXT is to be developmental for the most part, he probably doesn't need a run there. And I actually think that's a refreshing direction to move away from this idea that everybody that comes over from Japan has to go through the system. Like the fact that they had Kushida there for so long and we're right. like, you're going to be in jacket time. <sighs> I don't like that. Um, very glad to see that they're moving in the direction of um, matching people with where their work rate is. And I feel like for Tamatanga yeah. too, someone who's a seasoned veteran, that's probably a good thing. As far as the name goes, Alex wants us to be Ty Dillinger, which I get, but I do feel like this I is mean, actually- we, we know- in the context of NXT, we know who this guy is. Look right. at his face and you go, that's Ty Dillinger. So I, I totally get him wanting to be Sean Spears or whatever, but just showing up and everyone being like, oh my God, it's Sean Spears, who is a name that means nothing in the context of NXT. And then for, I would I would prefer him to be like, is that is that Ty Dillinger? And then him to cut a promo saying, that's, that's the old me. This is who I really am. This is Sean Spears. And at that point, I'm all I'm all I'm all fine for it. But it was just weird for, for me like, oh my God, Sean Spears, which is which I guess is a thing like, oh, so Vic Joseph watches AEW. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's a, that's what we're to believe. I do like that trend in general, though, of Jade Cargill coming over as Jade Cargill and oh, Sean sure. Spears coming yeah. because as there's an actual competition around people are gonna be switching brands back and forth. So the fact that you're not like you're an entirely different person even though WWE doesn't always necessarily acknowledge things that are going on outside of the WWE world. Uh, I, I just personally do find that refreshing, but to, to Alex's point, this was somebody who jumped from WWE to AEW and is now jumping back. So uh, maybe, maybe Ty Dillinger is one of the three faces of him or something. Maybe we will find out down the road, but um, I actually really liked the chairman gimmick. So I'm, I'm excited for this. I always thought my favorite presentation of, Sean Spears was always the glove. That was like my favorite thing that he did. And it was the shortest lift one. I thought that was so much fun, but that's totally in Kate's wheelhouse. Corey, are there any other updates or anything that you either A, want to report or B, have heard rumblings about or want to speculate on while you're here? And, and please there's... clarify which. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trust me, I, I'm not in. I'm not in the interest of being misquoted. So uh, <laughs> the first thing, obviously, um, a big title match set for next week as well. Oscar and Kyrie are going to come down and defend the women's tag titles. I'm told that this has been something that NXT and Sean specifically have been pushing for since Isla and Alba ended up uh, dropping the titles in the unification match with Rousey and Baszler all that time ago. The original plan was supposed to be, as it was explained, that the titles would go back to being defended. And uh, if uh, a couple in NXT don't uh, don't feel particularly happy about that, that there hasn't been much uh, defenses on the brand. So the response to that announcement has been met with a lot of positivity uh, backstage and with officials. Um, and re and another thing that was not that was originally planned for tonight was uh, Fallon Henley and 
Blair Davenport were supposed to start a program tonight, but it was pushed back to next week because of time constraints. That's that's something that I think will be a fun program personally. Um, and mm-hmm. in terms of any speculations, um, a lot of people have been asking me about what I think about um the possibility of Nakajima coming in now that Charlie Dempsey is the uh Heritage Cup t- champion. If you want my opinion on it, I think that there's going to be a time when that AJ, AJPW uh, alliance or deal or working relationship is going to come back NXT's way. They lent Charlie over to NXT or to AJPW. So I expect it, some form of AJPW representation and um, possibly for stand and deliver. Uh, but one program, that, uh, sorry, I completely forgot about this <laughs> right now. There's just so much going on in my head. Um, but the tag team title program that is expected for Stand and Deliver, as it was teased tonight, is Braun and Baron versus the OC versus Gallows and Anderson. That is pretty much locked in at the moment. Uh, I was told to expect a multi-team qualifying match in the next few weeks, possibly as soon as the week after Roadblock. But um, yeah, that's really all there is that I really have to say right now anyway. No, that's awesome. I think Nakajima also either has a contract coming up or um, is expected to be departing AJPW in the near-ish future. Do not quote me on that. I know much more about New Japan than I know about All Japan, and I don't even know enough about New Japan to speak too confidently to things. So, uh, But I, I do believe it is a contract year for Nakajima as well. So interesting possibilities, not only with that partnership, but the possibilities of him just signing outright for WWE or in America in general. But um, Corey, thank you so much for, for coming on here and giving us a little bit more context for Sean Spears' debut. Finding out he's going to be working as Sean Spears. Matthew Hook saying Corey is awesome. He is awesome. I was kidding when I called him a coward before. Joel, you are not booked to win next week. You're never booked to win except <laughs> when the FIFA Championship is on the line. That's right. And you don't well, even defend that. He doesn't. He should vacate it at this point. It's very upsetting to me. So... Joel, who has the Fightful Championship, I am going to make like Dijak and ratio him every chance I get and maybe throw him into a river. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. But uh, Corey, thank you so much for, for joining us. We'll make more of a habit out of this as there is debuts and breaking news to, to bring you on uh, to pop the chat with your accent and to give us more information as often as we can. We appreciate all the hard work that you're doing. And we'll re- take this opportunity to remind you you could have had some of that earlier. You could have subscribed to FightfulSelect.com. Corey's got those scoops threads going up every Tuesday, except tape ones, which I guess will out. But thank you so much for joining, Corey. <laughs> Apparently, that's just going to be the bit, isn't it? Anytime there's a double oh, yeah. tape and I'm going to be a coward, I should have done this, I should have done that. But hey, yeah. I'll take it. Well, welcome. <laughs> You're, we gave you a bit in your second appearance. That is like, that is top tier stuff. So normally bits are are more earned here, but we basically <laughs> treated you like Opa Femi because you're doing such a great job. You got hot shotted right away to a bit, and here you are. So I'll take it. <laughs> Corey, thank you so much for joining. All right, guys. Thank you, Corey. See you. See you guys. Night. Have a good night-ish morning night. over there. Yeah, yeah. Night slash morning, yeah. <laughs> Get some rest. All right, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Well, that was uh, the darling Corey. So yeah. nice to have him on when yeah, we have such, him here. He's such <laughs> a, a a breath of Irish spring fresh air. He really know? is. Yeah, isn't that um, a detergent? It's a soap, um, soap. Or, or deodorant. <laughs> yeah. You know. Oh, it smells like an Irish spring. Um, there you go. Yeah, some guy who's not Irish they hired to be in all those commercials back in the eighties. It was very funny. Um. So, yes, um, I I am under the weather, but I'm I'm feeling a lot better than I did before. I'm a I'm I'm better, but still bad. So basically, I'm Dominic Mysterio, um, and so that's we're gonna push through this whole thing. It'll be fine. Don't worry about it. And uh, and and we have we have apparently doctor puns, which I appreciate. Thank you. Yeah, I was like, we're gonna do doctor puns because mm-hmm. Alex is sick, but we also have more important things. Not more important things, equal of importance, but not pun related chats to get to. Like my dad saying greetings, SGS and JWP. Feel better, Paul Paulowski. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate you being here. (sighs) I'll try. Um, There's some good ones coming in already. Yeah, there are. 
I'm excited. Um, I'm excited. So, do you want to talk about? I, I would. I would rather talk about the the opening bit as a prelude to the closing bit. Okay. okay yeah, I'm, I've been grouping most of the stuff in my notes, so yeah. that also works. I can start. Um, I the I would like to start with 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 saying that um, that Ava should get a better office. Because yeah, it, this it, is it looks it's giving it looks office like she, space. It's giving your in storage room. Base. Yes, it did. It does. Like, <laughs> basically, it's like I believe you. I, be, I believe you took my stapler. That's basically <laughs> what it's. <clears throat> so Ooh, yeah. She, she talks to Gigi and then like come into my office and they walk into this little alcove. It's very narrow. It's got a sink in it. And there is a door off, off the sink. Like there's a, you want, you have to walk past a sink with one of those little like paper towel things. Yes. Like one of those. And then you have to walk past it and then go into your office. And the office is like a table and a chair. It's not a desk. It's a table. Like She's been the GM for weeks now at this point. Yeah. Can we not and get her an office? Was the GM before she was even announced as one. So there was plenty of yeah. time. HR, whoever is an yeah, HR, yeah, yeah. needs to get it together. But I also just want to make it very clear. I told Alex that I would, like, drive the ship today. Right. And but he, I, like, I need, immediately I need, just jumped in. Like, but it's I, not but I, I, needed, I needed to get that part of there because I feel like you would have skipped it. I needed to talk about her <laughs> office. I'm still going to let you talk. Okay, good. <laughs> Listen, it's just, you know. No, it feels weird. This feels weird, but I'll do my best. We had Ava Rain um, backstage saying that every show leading into Stand and Deliver is a big show, which I liked. And you have Gigi Dolan walking up, and she wants to talk about what's next for her. This is, what, this is what we got Corey, Corey. in here. Corey should just <laughs> ask around, find out why she doesn't have an office. Why it's not is like it so makeshift? It, it's not yeah. like they're touring. Like, no. it's like, and they're in a different arena this week than they were last week, and so it's a different. Like, she should have an office, even if it's Wait. that one. If it's one of those offices that, like, one of the walls is made out of cardboard, so somebody can spear somebody through it, just something. Because, because, like, step into my office. Don't mind the sink. Somebody dumped their yogurt in there this morning. Like, it just feels weird. Um, Alex on the main roster. Drew McIntyre put his sword, I want to say, through a table, and they he shipped did. that table to mm -hmm. the next arena. You would I think did. if you can ship a table with a sword in it from one yeah. arena to another yeah. at NXT, you could find an office to you put could. your new general manager in. Yeah. But Gigi Dolan wants to know what's next for her, and so do I, Gigi Dolan. I'm a big fan of hers. I would also like to know what's next for her. Um, and so does Jada Parker. She would also like to talk. And Gigi says that the line is behind her. Man, Jada Parker has so much charisma, man. <laughs> She's she like very, she very, very good at this already. Um, and Ava tells them that they're each other's immediate future. So enjoy that match. Mm -hmm. Um, and she tells Jada to leave first, but Jada is extremely natural at this. Like, yeah. Uh, the segment later, especially when they're basically <laughs> saying what we've been saying about Ariana Grace, but we'll get there in a little bit. Like she just has assimilated to a very weird environment and uh, done so with a ton of confidence and and just natural charisma. Mm -hmm. um, she seems like she wants to be there to wrestle, which is also refreshing. She's not right. like I am a hobbyist in this thing and also a wrestler, right. which is my least favorite approach to pro wrestling. So yeah, uh, I I actually appreciated this segment and what it led to later. Outside of I had the same takeaway. Like, why yeah. is her office so bare bones? It shouldn't yeah. have cinder block walls. That's not fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Jada being already in the office and Ava like, what are you doing in here? Um, she walked in of her own volition, but then when she's like, Ava, you leave, I'm uh, sorry, uh, Jada, you leave first. Jada turns around and walks out the other. There are two entrances to this room. <laughs> Why are there two doors to your office? That's, that's, a, that's like a, you have a Jack and Jill office. That's <laughs> Why would you do that? That's a that's a dumb way. That's, you shouldn't have that for your office. There should be one means of entrance to your office, like because they, they they come in from the left and then she exits through the right. And I feel like that's not whatever. Guys, Alex um, was unwell today, and he's still picking up every staging this is, thing. This is, this is this is this is like my sickness. 
The real I sickness, love it though because I will say yesterday's yesterday's I caught when Dominic Mysterio went the opposite way after being like, I'm yeah. gonna follow them and I'm just flat out left the yeah, other direction. Yeah. Like just soft shooed the other way. Uh-huh. Um but this is good. Like Ava's presence on the show has expanded into her doing way more valuable things than she was in the beginning. And this was a nice example of that. And it led to a match later in the day. Made sense. Mm-hmm. That's neat. We like things that make sense. We don't always get things that make sense on the show, nope. but we like nope. them. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, speaking of things that make sense, just, I mean, it's, it makes sense because it's, it's the next T. Another, hey, there's somebody at ringside who's going to stop me from winning the match. And then we're just going to, did we do that 12 times tonight? That might have been, been 12 matches, but they did it 12 times tonight. They did it 12 times in four matches. No, there, was, yeah. there were a lot of very talky segments today, actually. And a lot of short matches, which was not my favorite. But a lot actually did happen on this episode. But yeah. our first match of the night is Kalani Jordan versus Kiana James. And uh, we, of course, get Izzy Dame cutting Kalani Jordan off from going through the ropes. So she goes over them instead and dives onto Kiana and Izzy. Um, We get Izzy yanking Kalani off the apron and then rolling her up. And Kiana going for the 401k for the three and a suplex. And that comes after a suplex and a shot Mm -hmm. over the ropes. So Mm -hmm. um, I liked that the ending of this had damage before the like goofy ending yeah it, it made it a little bit more sellable but it is just lather rinse repeat yeah. uh of some formulaic booking that we get over and over again not just in general but within yeah. the same night to your point this match yeah. was just kind of there it didn't really have any stakes yeah. but uh yeah. both gals looked fine in it um yeah it was it was, it was inoffensive but yeah. izzy dame continues to be a presence. <laughs> yes. Out. Yeah. No. She she's doing her job, which is to you know stop people from doing that. I like that her little um her weird little it's like an eat defeat, but with the, instead of a feet, it's a knee. That little yes. move that Kiana James eat does, the they call the they call it the the uh, deal breaker, which I think is a great name for for her thing. But they they already had a great finisher for her. And they just didn't call it a good thing. They should have been the way of 401 KO. But that was a great finisher, too. Now she's got two of them. So you should give one of those to somebody else because a lot of people don't have good ones. Um, uh, this is where we found out that Booker T was back. And, uh, oh, my God. Did, did I not miss that guy? He sure was back. <laughs> this girl, Kalani Jordan, is here. Oh, yes, man. Just that all night. Um, I, uh, you know what I will say about him? He jumped right in without skipping a beat. Cause when you don't yeah, watch the show yeah. that's in front of you to start, well, yeah, you but he, being off screen makes no difference yeah. at all. He, but he, he did call Luca Crucifino Lou Safino. So, like, he doesn't watch the show. Like, that's the thing. He doesn't watch the show at all. So, you know. No. Nope. Uh, Byron Saxon, I did not know your game. I take it back. I miss you so much. I miss Wade Barrett, honestly. Like, Wade Barrett was was excellent when he was back, especially for the Mm pay-per-view. But Booker T, uh, absence did not make the heart grow fonder. So maybe it was just not a long enough absence. Mm -hmm. We should see if more absence will make us miss him because currently... The missing him level was at zero uh-huh. percent. Yeah. And I I just I did not care. <sighs> I'm trying to this is hard to keep track of chats on Night's Light tonight. Hold on. I'm gonna go to the super chat document. All right. Instead okay. of the the actual chats because there's so much happening. There's doc puns. Right. Yeah. The super chat document has no super chats, so we're good. So we're good. Okay. Yeah. Good. Then we'll just move on to the next segment. I wasn't expecting there to be like any no. anything for most of the first half. No. Of the show. Do you, Do you remember the last time we saw Idris <laughs> and uh, NFA and Malik Blade have a match? They looked really I, good. It was against um. It was Axiom against Frazier, 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 and it went like twenty two minutes, and it was amazing. 
So the so how we're going to build on that with these two guys is have them lose to four and a, in four and a half minutes. Yes. To 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 the good bros, and I feel like there was there could have been a different team that you did that to, and then had them be part of the gang of all the tag teams that jumped the good brothers because that you, you really just, cause I was like, wow, these guys are great. And then you booked me to the way you booked them. And the next, in the subsequent match is to look like crap. Yeah. And like that, that's not, that's not smart. You, you, you convinced me because I was, I was not a big fan of Malik Blade and Ederson O'Fay. And then you put the no match with Frazier and, and Axiom. And I was like, I really like what these, these guys have improved a lot. I really like Malik Blade isn't wearing the sweater vest anymore. I am yeah. I am down for this team. And then you book them to just get squashed by the Good Brothers, who I feel like haven't had a tag match in about have they had a tag match since they've been back? Like has it been I more think so early, stuff? but like, like early, not early not stuff. I don't think since not AJ recently. was out. Yeah. Not I recently. mean AJ and AJ was out for a while. Yeah. Um, but this, yeah, if we get Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson versus NFA and Malik Blade. Jack Hammer from NFA um, going for the apron where he kicks Gallows through Blade and steps. Uh, but this ends with Gallows and the Magic Killer. Um, this was, to your point, a weird follow-up. I yeah. get wanting to establish Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson as dominant in a new environment. Yeah. Um, have why a, you picked you just have him, pay and Malik Blade? Have him they, beat Hank and Tank. Have him beat Hank and Tank. Hank and Tank is right there. That's a perfect call. And these are these are two big boys and have Gallows and Anderson run through them. That's right there. Perfect. So it is. Now I will say Gallows and Anderson I thought looked great in this. Like I was yeah. it is I mean, refreshing that they care. Like it's you said crazy last week. <laughs> that when they actually attempt to, to, to care about what they're doing, they're actually good. That's, They're from the weird. Randy Orton school of thought. They're like, I'm not going to try if you're not going to try creative. So why would I? But here it is refreshed and renewed. Uh, Corey mentioned it earlier that feels like the program <coughs> that we're headed for at Stand and Deliver is probably the Good Brothers versus the Wolf Dogs. Um, that is a good mania program. It is obvious who's going to win that with Braun going up and stuff, but right. not, not mad about it. And then post-match, We've got Chase U coming through the audience, John Moxley through the, style. Through the through the Chase U section. Through the Chase U section, they must have been mm -hmm. sitting watching this to the Chase U section. Mm -hmm. That's and right. Chase and Duke, um, well, Chase says that Karma's a bitch, and Duke says that they aren't the first people to come in here. But it's time for a Chase U sized ass whooping. Wise call to have the guy that's six five say that because <laughs> Mr. Chase is not that big of a dude. No. So it would not be that big of an ass kicking, but you got Frazier and Axiom also coming in and saying that they have next on the OC. They get on the apron and they argue. And then the LWO is here for reasons. Wild hits a drop kick on Gallows. <laughs> and all the for teams mm -hmm. uh, send the OC to the outside. They're not happy about these big guys. <laughs> showing up but the wolf dogs are on the platform of course our beautiful platform watching all of this happen uh match was extremely one-sided and did not do anything for malik and nfa post match made sense at least like the no it challengers didn't. no because lwo makes it make no sense okay lwo yes makes absolutely no sense That's makes it make no sense <laughs> like fair. gallus have gallus come in from behind and like like beat him up like i don't know Something like Gallus is the tag. LWO is not an NXT tag team. I cannot stress this enough. They are currently on SmackDown, getting their ass handed to them by Santos Escobar and his lackeys. They are Im immersed in a feud on a different show. They're, they they did not. They're not doing a thing where like Cal Anderson got slapped by AJ Styles and decided to show up at the, at the PC. That's not what they're doing. They are on a different show. Why they're a part of this, I have no idea. I'm it's, fine. I'm fine with if you're a champion in NXT for as long as you're a champion in NXT, then you're on both shows. You're not on both shows if you're just guys. That's dumb. No, that is weird. And uh, they certainly don't have the like cachet of somebody on the main no. roster coming back because they've been there and mostly losing <laughs> for like ten minutes. 
So it doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense there. I like Chase U having something to fight for. I like Axiom and Frazier sticking around as a tag team, but this is kind of an indictment of your tag division at this point. Like they've, They've really run it into the ground, which I feel like anytime you have the Dusty Cup winners be two singles guys thrown together, that's ultimately kind of what you get, especially when one of them is going up to SmackDown, so at least one of them. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of what we got for this segment. I don't know if you have anything more to add. But... Nope, nope. Well, we'll talk more about the... I guess we can talk about it now. Wolf Dogs are up in the raven's nest watching this whole thing laughing to each other and then they come out of an elevator and braun says he has an airbrush guy and he'd like to to hook up baron corbin with his airbrush guy spoiler alert that's not the only person who's got an airbrush letter letter jacket and i i do like it's not 1998 spring break (laughs) i i i like that baron corbin is like yeah Airbrushing on your on your leather jacket is kind of dumb and 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 old and like are you Brian Knobs like <laughs> yeah. what, what like are, are we the nasty boys that's dumb but um but they have a face off with the good bros and um they they honestly I did like the interplay a lot a lot you know what I mean that was fun that was good and I, I didn't feel know like Braun Breaker had comedic timing until he today does. he does he has <laughs> he has good comedic timing this was fun um and Braun and Baron lose. And uh, at, at, at stand, stand and deliver, and, and then, deliver, and then uh, and then the good bros are your heel champions. Everyone has to chase. That feels that feels smart, right? Like yeah. that 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 that, that, fit, that fills the role. I mean, I, I would I like to see somebody on the NXT roster ready to be what the good brothers are going to be. Yes, but do they have anybody ready for do that? No, they do not. So, you know, their division got very weak and it's kind of a bummer (coughs) because I liked the work that LWO was doing when they were here. Um, And I liked the work that the Creeds were doing, obviously, though they should have gotten called up. But now it's like got called up to do what? Because they they came on so strong and then haven't been doing anything. They weren't aligned with uh, Alpha Academy like we thought they might be. They weren't aligned with somebody who could be a stronger mouthpiece for them. They've just kind of been floating around ivy nile went up with them and she's had like half a tag program with someone who's not ready to be on the main roster at all in maxine dupree yeah. so it just uh overdue for call of yes called up to what is an important question in this i think yeah. so there was no real rebuild because gallus felt like actual tag team right but the right. family kind of didn't and chase you kind of they felt like a tag team but they were something bigger and it was mired in such weird stuff and they never really wrestled um so it 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 just has been story driven not supported by any matches which is not a great way to keep a tag team fresh but i'm actually excited about this for the good brothers because they seem renewed about it and i think uh they can do i would say the good brothers biggest strength is making other teams look good so this is a good spot for them yeah but let do cuts and wrestle for the love of God, mm, he's gonna he's gonna wrestle and lose uh, on Tuesday. So, yeah, yep. Um, earlier in the night, <laughs> we have Roxanne Perez losing her ever loving shit in the locker room, <laughs> yep. complaining about losing out on a title shot for two weeks in a row. She goes to leave and Jakara comes in and talks a bunch of S and says uh, Lash should stay ready and we get a brawl. Um, I'm going to talk about all the weirdness that we got with um, Lyra in one foul swoop as well. But this does lead to a four minute match between Roxanne and Jakara Jackson. That has Roxanne dodging a slap and going out of her mind on Jakara into the ropes and she knocks the car down a big right hand and a drop kick charging uppercut in the corner and a russian leg sweep into the cross face and jakara jackson taps um i do not like this direction for roxanne i like the difference in the in-ring move set like i i really like sure. her using the cross face i like the russian leg sweep that we got tonight um i just 
There's some people that are baby faces and Roxanne is one of them. Yeah. And if she's going to be a heel, it should not be, in my opinion, this heel. She should just be the prodigy. This like mm -hmm. this I'm going nuts thing when you're as small as she is, is something that's very, very difficult to pull off. And like it's also she's... feels way outside of her real house because it just makes her look like a little kid. It's it doesn't work the way that it's been presented. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll throw it over to you for your thoughts on this wonderful segment and this four minute and 11 second match. Cause man, did we get not a lot of match time today? <laughs> um, we got, um, she also came out. I don't know. If she has the same airbrush guy as Braun breaker, but she also <laughs> has an airbrush letter, letter jacket. And I, he was doing like flash designs like they do. Yeah. for tattoos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like uh, did you $25 go to the, dollars off the sheet? Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you go to the County fair and have that airbrushed on your leather jacket? Just like it, it feels, so it does. Cute. It feels very much like the nasty boys, which is again, a thing from 19 in the mid nineties. So um, maybe that's, maybe that's the new thing for the kids now. Maybe that's whatever. Um, Boy, it, it is weird to hear Vic Joseph, who has been positioned as the objective commentator, say disparaging things about R Roxanne Perez. Um, and also really nice things about Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson, which is why I, uh, I believe something else that is happening later in, in, in the show coincides with this. But um, yeah, they're, they fully positioned her as a heel. Um, and, um, she is, um, like she's, she's upset. She haven't, she's never got her, her title match her one-on-one -on -one title match. And I think she's right to be upset about that, but they want you to think she's wrong about being upset about that. And that's weird. So it is just a weird thing for them to, uh, it's, it's st still up to me. It doesn't make any sense to take the purest baby face on your roster and turn her into Brian knobs. It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it, but you've done it. And so we'll, we'll see. I hope this is short lived and we pivot back. I mean, like when we, when they pivoted from a uh, heel Carmelo to face Carmelo, and now they're back to heel Carmelo, maybe they'll pivot back to baby face Roxanne. But at that point, like she will have been here for far too long. Like there's, I mean, not, not that I listen. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm as I am a Liv Morgan fan, sure, and she has a lot of that history with Rhea Ripley. But if Rhea Ripley is going to hold that title through the summer, through the fall, inching into Mania season again, I'm not, so, I'm not saying they're going to, but if they are, like bringing up a pure baby face in Roxanne Perez, who Rhea doesn't take seriously but shocks the world, then you make a brand new star. Like, and, and, and for me, what they've done with her now, she just feels like another bratty, like I dress in leather and I'm angry all the time. Like it is, it's, it basically, it feels like all of the men who write this stuff for her have teenage daughters at home and despise them. And that is, and that is how they write her. Yeah, like, th like you don't, does. you don't, you don't, ungrateful little <laughs> I'm not going to say it. You go to your room, young lady. That is what it feels like they are writing for her to me. So yeah. that is fair. And it is also someone I think I'd said in the chat last week. Uh, it feels almost <laughs> like, well, we were going to have this for Cora Jade. So now you just have to be Cora Jade. I know. Like I that, know. I don't like. One thing I do like is that it's actually rooted in the trajectory she's had so far a little bit. But when you mentioned what Vic Joseph was doing on commentary, it's like, you can't do that on, I mean, he could do whatever he wants. He has the job and I don't, sure. but like, I would prefer that he doesn't do that on commentary when booking's already done that to her. Like book, booking already made her so damn vulnerable that to then go and cut her legs out from under her on commentary. It's just like, someone's got to help her out here. because She's great. So Let's keep that going. But I don't know, Alex, if you had asked me not uh -huh. too long ago if yes. I thought she'd be going to the main roster yeah. to help Bailey out. Right. I probably would have put money on that. Okay. Would you have? I probably would have. And oh. quite honestly, it would have been a bad choice because it doesn't seem like that's the direction it's going now if she's going to be working heel. 
But it would have been my own fault because I didn't check bet online about it. Okay. I was not educated. I did not go to the place with the earliest betting lines. And I should have been paying attention to the ad that we run very frequently on uh, this and many other shows. So it's like, it's really my bad. But this time I'm going to pay attention to it. I'm going to listen to Sean Ross app for the first time in my life. And uh, we'll go from there. But here's Sean to tell us all about it. Hey guys, I'm here to tell you about Bet Online AG, the official betting partner of Fightful. Whenever you hear about odds for wrestling events, boxing events, MMA events, or really anything, it comes from betonline.ag. They have the earliest lines with odds open before the competition. You can bet big with high limits and rebet functionality. They have the fastest payouts with winnings paid in just minutes and the industry's best bonuses on every qualifying deposit. The biggest markets like NFL, NBA, NCAA, NHL, UFC, plus odds for things like WWE, AEW, and tons of other companies as well. They also have a bunch of popular games. They've been trusted for 25 plus years. As I mentioned, if we have odds here on Fightful, they are always coming from betonline.ag. Check it out, my friends. Bet what you can. Please bet responsibly. Wow. Now I know better. Right. And I will bet smart but, and frequently hmm. with betonline.ag. So should we do the, the worst thing on the show followed by the best thing on the show? Sure. As... As, as Louise calls it, this Thea Hale business. <laughs> just sit- I mean, I, you could also argue Von Wagner and Lexus King just as a match was the worst no, thing. Well, that's a that's a match. I'm talking. Ta- this 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 is this this the storyline that the match was whatever. This this thing that they're doing with Thea Hale and J C Jane now being a heel and she has what was her name again? Jasmine Nix with seven Y's. Yes. But I don't think it was quite seven, <laughs> but it, was, it feels like seven. It, it may have been it, closer to five, but it's seven. Um, um, she's the most Gia from Full House person ever. And it's it's yeah. already not great, but it's just going to be worse because you don't know who Gia from Full House is because you're mm, mm, yeah. Full House ignorance. I'm, yeah. I, I, have a, I have a blind spot in my Full House. Uh, uh, More? Yeah. I do. Um, anything. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's uh, there. Full House started in '87. I was that was I was the target age. Eventually, I aged out of Full House. So that's that's all it is. Full House was you on the air for a long ass time. I, I by the like when I was when I was watching it, Stephanie Tanner, who apparently is the person who is is in in the has the relationship with Chia. She was just the five-year-old going, how rude. And that's it. Like, she didn't have anything else. There were no storylines surrounding Stephanie Tanner. She she came in, hit her mark, said her catchphrase, and she got the hell out. You know what I mean? That's that's working right there. So <laughs> That's some Hulk Hogan stuff. <laughs> catchphrase, leg drop, and she's out of there. That's right. <laughs> um, so Jasmine Nix says uh, of Riley who is not behaving the way he should, I guess. Um, they don't chase, we don't chase you, they chase us. We don't chase and you. Chase you, they huh? chase us. And See, what they... I think you're missing is that it's a reference. No, to I, I got it. I got it. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, but she says, um, you were used to be a loser. Says JC, not now, not now, obviously, but back then you were a loser. And uh, Chase and Duke, they're losers. Look, it was me, I was the one who had to save the university with my amazing scheme of making a calendar. <laughs> and then Gianna James shows up and goes, Hey, those are some great calendars. How many times does they sell out? Three times? That's right. Everybody should bow down to me because I am I am the calendar. Mister. Bow down to the Bow down, JC Chater. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, yep, good. Um, and uh, and then they go off and they leave. They leave Thea Hale there. She goes, losers. Seriously. And I just want it to be over. 
I think Thea Hale's incredibly talented. I want this to be over. I do. Yeah. Also, Fallon Henley catching a lot of strays. In this yeah, season. poor Fallon. <laughs> she wasn't around to defend herself. I know. Is everyone saying only really we get to call her horse girl? Yeah. And say yeah. things. Yeah. Because we're mean about creative, not just mean to her. No. Uh, I. Yeah. So <laughs> it was bad. Here are all the levels it was bad on. One, uh, taste wise, I don't like it. Um, Thea Hale after was like loser. Really, it half felt like she was gonna break out into an emotive solo and a yep. musical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also JC Jane. Okay, like Thea Hale went on a hot let me buy leather stuff shopping trip with JC Jane months ago. Mm -hmm. But she was still like amped up girl for most of this so when she was like no you're cool now as opposed to what two weeks ago yeah. um also why are you saving the university of people you don't respect them that makes no sense yeah like, i know those losers i'm gonna help them in their intense financial scandal makes right. absolutely no sense yeah. uh this was not great at all uh i i really liked the sincerity that we got from thea Hale. <coughs> Week was not not mm. very good but she just is so much she's just she's gia mm -hmm. she just is so if you know that reference you're probably like i don't like this but i at least i'm on board in the sense okay. that i get that it's, it's been uh and then of course the very best thing is that oba oba femi um coming in to talk to ava and he says i need to know who is my next victim and uh, and she says, "Oh, well, I'm trying to figure out. I know there's a lot of people who who would really love a shot at the North American title. They say that now, but when they get into the ring with me, they'll be singing a different tune or whatever he says. I'm like, I love this guy. So, so good. Much. I love this guy so much. And, and then who showed up, Alex? Dragonov showed up, and they had a stare down. And um, I don't know if they're ever going to give it to us. I really don't. But I, I, I don't think that they. I don't think that they will." Maybe maybe in like um, spring break again, which of course is in May. Um, but we all we don't know when spring break is. Yeah, Sean Seanathan heat, heat wave. Davis Michaels the second, junior PhD. Uh -huh. Not in booking. <laughs> you do not <coughs> put that thought in my mind mm -hmm. and not follow through with it. Yeah. You do not put it out there. I mean, simply take it away. You don't show it to me if I'm not allowed to see it, Sean Finn mm -hmm. Michaels Jr., the second yeah. PhD, MD, Esquire. None of I it's does not qualify for that. I don't know. I honestly don't know. They they have their um their big one, which is the heat wave is on the same weekend. It's in Toronto or or where they're doing um, money in the bank. Um, so maybe they do a big title for title thing. Then that would mean Ilya Dragunov gets through stand and deliver and everything else in order to get there, which is certainly possible. Um, but like, that feels like the biggest possible show they could do that at. Um, but I guess we, we would see who would win in, in a title for title, but it might not be for title for title. It might just be one thing on the line, but I feel like, Obafemi would would be willing to put up his belt because he's so damn confident. And Ilya should like Ilya, Ilya should, uh, mm -hmm. because that's the type of champion that Ilya is. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, I I need it. I need it in my veins, real bad. Yeah, and we also don't get a lot of title for title stuff or champion versus champion stuff in NXT. I normally really appreciate that. Like, I don't, no. I don't love that story unless it's done with the right guys. These are the right guys. Yeah, yeah, so. yes. And it, but it, it also it is crazy that they even put they they know what 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 the overall reaction to Oba is. Yeah, you know how everyone is is super on board with this guy because how is his does his match the number of matches he has had number in the tens like. Of, not of televised ones at no, all. No, certainly not like, televised. I'm just talking about like 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 Ever? house show on the Largo loop or whatever. 
Like that that that's where he is. And then Dragonov, who did this forever in Europe before he came to, to the States, like that kind of experience that he has. Um, it is to me it's 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 very funny because this is this is um um Luis says it's Sting versus Vader, which is a really good way to describe it. It's um Sting versus Vader. Um, that's a very apt comparison, yeah. <laughs> um but um this is this is the Dragonov versus the big guy who just keeps trying to put him down. Um, so it's the Dijak match times a hundred because it's Obafemi. I love Dijak, but like just the the the, Ob- the way they present Obafemi is that nothing can hurt him, and also he just throws you th- like through the earth. So like there's just so much. He throws 28, 28 matches in his career. Um, if you aren't subscribed to Fightful Select. I'll say this. I tell you all about the great things about Fightful Select. I'm always out here pushing Sean's Q&A. Always talking about the scoops. We've got Corey now who's killing it on the NXT scoop specifically. If you don't subscribe because yesterday Alex and I play video games mm-hmm. and he was Obafemi and he said that he moved all of his like strength and stuff up to 90 because I love Obafemi and he's my, fr- he's my best friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's my best friend. You want to see moments like Alex saying, oh, Femi is my best friend in real time. I promise you. Uh-huh. There's a reason that it's paid walled. Okay. It's yeah. high value and it's very special. Mm-hmm. You should be subscribed to Fightful Select because we also have the Linder in that video game as well. Right. And we played two matches yesterday mm-hmm. and they were both awesome. And other than Aaliyah getting in way too much offense. No offense That's weird. That's against sad. Linda, who has like a nasty move set. Yeah, really nasty. It's true. Um, yeah, this is great. Um, There's some good stuff say- for Dragon Off lined up, and we'll talk about the rest at the the end of the yeah. show. Yeah. Um, um, Obafemi walks out later into the parking lot, and Beach wants a shot at him, and Oba's like, "All right, cool. This this, this is not something you want to do, but all right." Um, I love when he says, "Who is my next victim?" Mm-hmm. Uh. It's even funnier because, like, Ava Rain has his <coughs> office while this right. is happening. Mm-hmm. But I actually really liked the staging of the way Dragonoff came in because mm-hmm. I just, I really like what they're doing with Obafemi, and we never get it in NXT because yeah. he's just, it's Gunthery and that he's just like unbeatable mm-hmm. champion who's unafraid of anybody. And right. uh, everything is so character heavy in NXT that this is, this is really refreshing. So, yep. Yeah. Um, Dijak defeated Lou Safino. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. Louis, Louis Safino. Um, Lucas Crucifino. He didn't actually, even call like, him like Lucas Crucifino. Like, it's no. not, if you're looking at his name, it's not even Lou close Safino. to Lou. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lou Safino. Um, uh, and, um, and like, Crucifino got in a lot of great stuff. Like, he was just, sm- he was fighting, he was fighting hard. Against uh, against Dijak, but Dijak is too much for him and beats him. And it, it was, was good. good. It was a really good match. It was yeah. really good. Luca Crucifino looked great in this. Um, this is what they didn't do with Idris uh, and Malik in the beginning, uh-huh. where you knew the Good Brothers were going to win, but like they they would look good in the process. They didn't really look good in the process. Here is the opposite. Like you knew Dijak was gonna win. He wins with uh, what does he use as the finisher? I always forget what it is. No, feast your eyes. The feast your eyes with the discus boot right before it too. Um, this looked he looked great, and I just really appreciate that Dijak just commits felonies until he gets stipulation matches, and then he looks great in stipulation matches. Because right after this, we get Gacy, who broke out while still in a straight jacket. <laughs> uh-huh. We got him distracting in this match. Um, and Luca nailing Dijak with the crowbar. And Gacy and Dijak battling to the back after this. So, um, And then later, somebody is recording them. I don't know who, but Dijak is arguing with Ava. It's and- Gacy. Gacy's recording it. Oh, Gacy's recording it, which is why... Okay, why the camera drops. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, he says that Dijak may be done with him, but he's not done uh-huh. with her. 
uh, and the camera drops and we get a brawl and Ava says he cannot keep doing this, which <laughs> good for her. <laughs> so good oh. match. Angle continues. Uh, we find out that we're going to get an asylum match between these mm-hmm. two. And I just, I like that Dijak is like, I'm just going to p- threaten people's lives until I get stipulation matches. Cause he's great yep. at them. Yep. It'll be good. Um, what I love also is uh, you have um, Tony D saying to Stax as they watch the end of the, the match. He says, uh, you see that? The kid hung in there. Go get him for me. Get him now? Nah, not now. I got bigger things to do later. But then after that, go get him. So we're gonna we're finally getting a guy. It's Luca Cusafino. He's gonna be in the he's gonna be in the gang. Perfect. We have been asking for that for a long time. Yep. This is the direction we wanted for Tony D for so long. We're gonna talk about it more at the end of the show, which was really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Um but let's get this potato packs so Lyra Valkyria stuff out of the way because Lyra is there. She wishes Shotzi a speedy recovery and says that uh, she owes her a Mac w- match when she's back. If she still has the title when Shotzi comes back. <laughs> Something will have gone horribly wrong. Something if, if, is, La- if, Lyra, yeah. if this version of Lyra Valkyria is still the champion when Shotzi comes back for, from a 9 to 12 month recovery, Something will have gone terribly wrong. Yeah, because Lyra needs to. They need to do something else with Lyra. This is not working, and there are too many women who deserve t- title reigns. Between yeah, now you and can't then. you can't give Tiffany Stratton hardly any reign and Roxanne Perez no reign and her at that point fifteen month reign or whatever. Um, but she also gives Lash her flowers, which I liked too, saying that mm-hmm. um, she still has battle wounds to prove the the yeah. fight that she got again. More saying nice things about people in the metaphor. This is which which definitely would not yeah. have been the case a few weeks ago. Yeah. So, so. we do uh, foreshadowing of what is to come, perhaps. Yep. Um, and she says that she also owes Tatum because Tatum actually did what she was asked, which I liked that because that was mm-hmm. something that made sense. Yep. Uh, <sighs> And this basically all is a bunch of, hey, I know you were stalking me, but you did what I asked you to. And so I wanted, I want a tag team shot at the Kabuki Warriors with you, to which Tatum is so honored. They still haven't explained why she's stalking her, really. Nope. Uh, but I, if I was Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark, I would be so pissed because it's happening. Uh, there was a video package later in the night, which I I loved the video package. I don't know why Lyra and Tatum were watching it, like as as footage to study. It was not like in ring footage. It was a video no. package, but it yep. it spoke to uh, their individual success, especially Oscar's in NXT is one of the most dominant women's champions of all time, yep. um, and also the fact that the Kabuki Warriors were the longest reigning tag team of all time. So really good job. Um, refreshing us on who the kabuki warriors are it just wasn't like they were watching footage of them in the ring so i was confused as to why they were watching this but right. we are going to get our women's tag title match next week um which i'm sure will be a, a good match but i i just don't understand why tatum is obsessed with lyra because she's clearly obsessed with lyra and not the title and her role in this whole promo was just like well i'll, I'll always look out for you Mm-hmm. Um, why? Why the sudden loyalty? Uh-huh. Uh, and I don't know. Poor Shayna and Zoe, bro. Yeah, Shayna and Zoe again won a number one contenders match uh, on January first. Still have not gotten a title match, and now we're just giving them to a woman and her stalker, who until today she did not like. Yeah, and also we're not getting a title match for the women's title at Roadblock. Um, which I'm sure will only serve to piss off uh, Roxanne even more. Yes, so, that makes yeah. sense. Um, <sighs> but this was weird to me too. Rich Holland being like interrupting them and like 
Excuse me, ladies, if you're if done. If there's anyone who's going to interrupt about the women's tag title picture, it's going to be Rich Holland. It was a very if, weird sequence of events. If you got, if you guys are, if you ladies are done, I would like to have the ring to talk to the to the to people to the people. And, and they're kind of um, like, oh, okay. Oh yeah, I guess we were done, so I guess we will leave. That was so odd. Um, I've only seen like real, like full, full heels, like, like really, really, like the like the idea of the heels interrupting the ladies, the yeah. baby face lady champion being like, "All right, sweetheart, get out of the ring. The men are gonna talk now." But yeah. he was respectful the way he said it. But it was such an odd thing. It's very Excuse easy. Me. It would have it would have been very easy for them to leave, and then for him to come in. Yes, I don't understand why he had to interrupt them. That didn't make any sense to me. But no, whatever. Didn't. Um, he doesn't, he doesn't say much before the lights go out and the little, the, the thing goes up on the Tron, this little, the, the evil of men and the hearts of men and also evil. And, uh, and then, uh, and then a, a guy shows up and he's backlit. And I was like, honestly, if you had, if you had given me a thousand guesses in the moment, no. I never would have said Sean Spears, but, uh, honestly with the chair should have tipped me off, but. It's, I was I was super excited and but immediately did I say Sean Spears? No, I said Ty Dillinger's back, baby, and uh, he's not. He's Sean Spears, which is fine. It's fine. It's just I was I was actually a really big Ty Dillinger fan. I thought he should have. I was the, too. I thought he should have won the NXT title from Robert Roode. Um, yeah, he should have. Like, he should. There have. was there was nobody more over on that roster for for a time for a time period. I'm not saying he should have kept it for long. But that moment of him winning they the title, the, like the, that guy, like he was so over, and nobody liked Robert Roode. Like no. so, like it was it was a perfect time for him to win it, and then he would lose it immediately. It's fine, but like he was so so over. There's the, he he has his like when he come out to like like uh, take over Brooklyn, and the entire crowd is doing the ten thing. The it's entire so crowd cool. just she it was so crazy. Like he was super over. And so I'm I'm happy he's back where he started and got that reaction, but also definitely playing heel now. So we'll I'm also happy that he got let out of his contract because they weren't doing anything with him in AEW for months and months. Right. So except yeah. like, hey, we're in Canada. You can work yeah. a spot. Uh so I'm I'm glad he was let out because I, I think it's a really classy move to right pay people for their contracted time, but if they have ambition to go work elsewhere and you're as well-respected as Sean Spears seems to be, I, th I think that's that's really cool. So good stuff there. Um, and also uh, just one of the most reliable guys I think that you can kind of put somebody in there with. I, I think he'll do a lot of good work in the, yep. in the veteran role there. Yeah. But Alex, um, I have a question for you. Do you now? Yes. How are you feeling so far? I'm I'm all right. Okay. I mean, I, I, it could be a lot better. Sure. Well, I'm glad Dominic, we're Dom, basically still Dominic Mysterio. I'm all right, but could be a lot better. Yes. That you, I DM'd Alex and was like, "How are you feeling?" And he was like, "I could be better, but um, not as I'm, bad as I was." So basically, yeah, I'm Dominic Mysterio. I'm, I'm better, but still bad. But That's still bad. Yeah. Uh, and I said, "You still got it." But I'm I'm glad that we limited your voice juice bo jukebox today. But if you guys are like, I'm so yeah. sad about that. Yeah. I understand. And we'll be back. But if you're like, I need someone's great <laughs> voiceover work to tide mm. me over. Well, we've oh. got the guy for you. It's Matthew Hooks of Hooked In Voiceovers. Huge supporter of our show here. Uh, especially huge supporter of the Fightful Awards as well. I believe a Texas-based voiceover artist. Hooked In Voiceovers. We tell you whenever the sponsorship comes up about how he's represented national and international brands, not only behind the mic, but he can do a lot of the production work for you as well. Get in touch with him at hookedinvoiceovers.com, a newly redone website not too long ago. Great supporter of the show, great friend of ours, and incredibly skilled at what he does. I don't know if he if he does wrestlers from wrestler heaven, that's something that you would have to email him at hooked and voiceovers at gmail.com about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. if, if so, perhaps he can get in on the bit one of these days, but, um, or maybe Could hack be. your internet. But what Could I be. do know is his normal voice has been trusted by some really important brands. He does a great job. You can hear his demos and his reels on his website. So please go check him out. Friend of ours. We love Matthew Hooks around here. We thank him for his continued support of our extremely normal 
show. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you're if you're itching for some voiceover and Alex's limitations have you hurting, hooked in voiceovers, where yep. to go? Yeah. Um, Shabugan says so. Ty Dillinger is back. It's kind of like Okada, right? Basically, but yeah. Basically, it's Okada. Uh, Lupongi Vice says the three faces of Spears: Sean, Ty, and Stan. I just kicked Stan. <laughs> That's good. Um, uh, Luis says, "Look, if he is the chairman in NXT, at least give him the WrestleFlow theme or a remix of it." Yeah, I mean, sure. We'll see if that's what it stays as. Like it, it, that could have just been a clever way to reintroduce him to. Like they might not want to yep. uh, keep that with him. But I thought the the shot was really nicely done too. I I really did not have him front of mind for this at all. But yeah, uh, they did they did a good job here. Mm-hmm. Um, Lexus King fought Von Wagner and lost. And lost to Von Wagner, which is a really hard thing to do. He lost because Robert Stone um, uh, distracted him. And um, after he lost, he attacked uh, Von Wagner and, um, and and beat him up a lot. And then attacked Robert Stone and gave him the, what's it called, the coronation. The yes. thing I liked about this the most, by, by liked, I mean hated. Um was uh, Vic Joseph being like, oh, what a sore loser. He lost the match fair and square, and he's now he's attacking his opponent after the bell. The idea that you would say that during a Von Wagner match <laughs> is so funny to me because that's his whole deal. I lose, but then I table you, so it's okay. And, and every time he would do that, Vic Joseph was like, the boyhood dream has come true. He put a guy through a table after losing. Let's all give a standing ovation to Von Wagner. And I'm like, you can pick, you can be, you can be pro sore loser or anti sore loser. You should not be able to be both. No. So, yeah. The best part of this was Robert Stone's cell of the coronation. I thought he got electrocuted. <laughs> It's Robbie E, man, he's, just, he's, he's doing this it. This was uh, on on par with the famous Urcel that we got out of uh, Iron Savages this weekend. It was mm-hmm. quite the sell, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't. I understand, and I half accept, and I only half accept because it goes against every fiber of my being as a wrestling fan to fully accept it that. The way that they measure success, <laughs> this this Mark. Um, yeah, he lost to Vern Wagner. Wagner. No, nobody loses to Von Wagner. Um. So I half accept that their measure of whether someone is over or not is screen time and not booking. I get that. It's my least favorite thing in wrestling. Yes. Yeah, I know. But there's taking losses and then there's losing to Von Wagner and you're still going to tell me and I guarantee you in a month, I'm still supposed to think Lexus King is super important and like King of the world yeah. when he lost to Von Wagner. I mean, the, the roll up is nuts. Like he's got his back to you. Just pick him up and do your terrible, like lazy half um, attitude adjustment and pin him with a move. Like the, the, the roll up is just so like, like, Oh, look at me. I'm going to school. I'm going to schoolboy you. That's what he says. He I'm going to schoolboy you. you. I'm going to schoolboy you. Um, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Um, also, Vic Joseph being like, he went after his kids. And, like, and and then <laughs> Booker being like, those kids are brats. They shouldn't be in the building. <laughs> those kids deserved it from being those, around. Those, those Booker kids deserved T, please it. please stop. Oh, fuck them so. kids. Booker T. That's um, right. So I guess we'll get more of this with Von Wagner versus Lixus King again, but it does shouldn't matter because Von already beat him once. Right. Like if Lex, if Lexus won and then uh, he attacked Rob, uh, Mr. Stone after the match and then Von Wagner would get revenge. Von, Von Wagner already won. This, this thing is over. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. I don't, um, I, I, Lexus King lost to Von Wagner. That's all. It's true. It was also true. My, my Cyclo bringing up that he tricked Melo into getting a pay-per-view match that he lost. 
<laughs> and, <laughs> Sucker. Thanks for that pay-per-view shine. Thanks for that pay-per-view match that you won on the pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, backstage, uh, Jada Parker um, yelling at Lyra Valkyria and Tatum Paxley um, and uh, Ariana Grace, Ariana Venti getting involved and um, being like, what? What? Pro- why do you have a problem with the Kabuki Warriors? We don't. We just want to be champions. And her being like, why do we have to fight about everything? Like, um, uh, it's NXT. So. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Jada Parker versus Gigi Dolan happens and Ariana Grace comes out to the whole thing. She is out there screaming, no, stop, don't fight for like <coughs> two minutes. And and nobody notices it like like the idea that like she comes out and is screaming wailing at the top of her lungs and nobody notices but anybody like, st- like strides down the ramp silently and people lose immediately to to, to roll ups is very funny to me um, but eventually GD Dolan does lose because of Ariana Grace um, and then still like why why can't we all be friends or something this is all dumb. The only thing that I appreciate about this is that everybody else seems to be acknowledging that this is wrestling. Uh, Jada Parker is like in your stupid crown. <laughs> I was like, thank yeah. you for yeah. acknowledging that this is not a beauty pageant and it is a wrestling promotion. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, the other thing I appreciate about this is this is genuinely why my sister won't watch wrestling. Um, she finds wrestling fascinating about it, like everything about it pretty fascinating outside of the actual wrestling. Uh, which she has no stomach for. So I, I appreciate that Ariana is speaking on behalf of my sister, who does not watch, um, because she's like, oh, a work shoot? That's interesting. Anyway, I can't stomach any sort of fake violence. So uh, she'll never see a John Moxley match. But she feels the same way. Like, if she had a character, it would be somebody who's like, well, why do we have to fight about it? Uh, which is antithetical to how pro wrestling works. But this is the first time we've seen an NXT that they're actually calling her on her BS of... This is not a beauty pageant. And Jada Parker was the right choice to do it because she was she's really good. Like she just she just is normal in this little world. So guys, get into your super chats and your humper chats and leave a thumbs up on this video. Pretty, pretty please. Tell me how pretty my hair is. Just got it done. Oh, Alex, you're either muted or your audio went out. Oh no! See, now we can just talk about how pretty my hair is because we can't it's, hear Alex. It's it's darker, right? It is darker and redder. Yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah. No, okay, now now I can see because you're fl- flipping back and forth. I just thought I <laughs> honestly I just thought it was bad lighting. I was like, <laughs> so you think be, it looks it, bad? It no it, no I I thought that it was I didn't recognize it being a different color. I just thought it was darker where you were. No, it's like, like the a, lights were. Just, I like, like the highlights and stuff. Right? Like, oh, this, it's, yeah, you. it's nice. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Um, uh, Shabugan says, is Von Wagner versus Lexus King the worst feud in wrestling maybe of all time? Luis says, I raise you Andre Chase versus Von Wagner. That was also very bad. That was... But honestly, the worst ones to me are when someone I hate beats someone I really like. Like well, two yeah. guys that I don't like, I just mm-hmm. I'm like I don't care, right? Um, yeah. But when somebody that I, I somebody that I think is genuinely bad at this beats someone right. that I think is genuinely great at this, mm-hmm. like the worst thing in the world to me would have been if Dominic beat Mustafa Ali. Like that right. would have, yeah, sent me. Um, the Heritage Cup Championship. They have a backstage segment where um, uh, Noam Dar uh, has PTSD <laughs> from the sneak attack. <laughs> And uh, he, he almost chokes on his water. This uh, face turn is my fault, I think. <laughs> I, I, I think it is. Um, and here's here's parts of why it's a face turn. Um, he came out for his match with only Oro Mensa, but both Lash Legend and Jakara Jackson were in the building. At yeah. least Jakara Jackson might have been like, well, she's, she's in the trainer's room because of the cross face, but Last legend, nothing happened to her. She could easily have been out there. That's weird that she wasn't. Um, so without all four of them, 
there's less of an opportunity for them to cheat. Correct. Because they were they were only there to cheat on behalf of oh, Dar. Now that they're not there, they they can't cheat on his behalf. And he's fighting against a team that's also heels, and they do cheat through the entire match. And Oramensa doesn't really do anything back to them, nope. which again is a babyface thing to do. Correct. Um, and uh, after the first fall, which was a backslide, Charlie Dempsey got him with a backslide. Immediately, Damon Kemp jumped in the ring where the ref wasn't looking and leveled Noam Dar, and and um, which is a thing that Noam Dar's people would have done a couple of couple of weeks ago. Correct. And we had um, uh, Vic Joseph again, the objective commentator, going like, "Oh, that's terrible! That was after the bell." The ref's back was turned. That's 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 cheating. That's obviously cheating. And so now at the, he got one fall back with his with his Nova roller, and then another, and then a uh, what was it, a dragon suplex bridging yes. for the one two three. Charlie Dempsey pinned him. They didn't even get. They didn't even need to get to like round five. It was over pretty quickly. Um, and now you have to me. This is Noam Dar turning face. Because now he can he can try and get back his Heritage Cup fighting against them. And um, it may be that he has to beat all the members of New Quarter Catch Crew in order to get a title match. I don't, there's no, perhaps Charlie Dempsey is the, is the final boss, but perhaps he isn't. And Drew Gulak decides, oh no, you beat Charlie Dempsey, but the title wasn't on the line. So now I'm the guy with the thing. Now you got to beat me. I don't know. Those are the stuff that, that, that they're doing here. They, they spoke highly of Jakara Jackson and Lash Legend on commentary and Lyra Valkyria put over Lash Legend. Um, Ora Mensa didn't do anything to help him. He was like complaining to the referee. Did not you not, did you not see that? He never ran around there and tried to like take out one of the guys who was interfering. He never did that. This is a, this is a face turn for Noam Dar. And again, it is, of course, all your fault. But It is entirely my fault. I take full responsibility. But what am I supposed to do? Not love Noam Dar? It's impossible. <laughs> well, now is you're it... allowed to. Because before you were going against right. what, they, what, what, what you were supposed to. Against well, societal norms. They would have you say, no, this guy's a cheater. And he's not very nice. And you said, I don't care. I love him anyway. He's a I bad love him boy. so much. <laughs> and but now you actually get to you actually get to love him. It's good. It right? wasn't even like he I don't even care because he's a bad boy. It was like I want to be in the metaphor. You did. Um you wanted to be the meta five for a while. I did. Mm -hmm. Uh this is gonna surprise a lot of people because they know I'm a techer gal. Mm -hmm. But there were parts of this that I did not like. Sloppy. Um, but really, fun. really, it was, it was it was a fun match, but it was not not what what you I know would have wanted from this. It uh, so it it I'm a little concerned. <laughs> I, huh. Having doing technical wrestling with a time limit is an insanely tricky thing. Mm -hmm. It's what I so appreciated and was so vocal about was Zack Saber Junior's title reign. Um, to do technical wrestling in rounds is almost impossible. Uh, mm -hmm. Because the beauty of technical wrestling is you're weaving the story of working over body parts over time. So to be so new with this and to give Charlie Dempsey the cup uh, makes me, it, it just makes me a little nervous because that's a very specific type of thing to try and master. And mm -hmm. uh, Zack Sabre Jr. has been doing it since he was 14. And so he was able to pull that off. Time, time limit technical wrestling is very, very difficult and requires really masterful endings to things and if they're just going to rely on a bunch of interference it kind of to me undercuts what's so cool about having like a catch club like i don't need it to be the black bull combat club but i do want it right. to be about the purity of the art form when you call yourself a catch sure. club yeah. so if they're just going to be doing the same shit that noam dar and the metaphor were doing i don't that's not for me at all like not every heel has to behave this way with the cup and it should be like a, a young kid grinding his teeth on, on this right. should have something to prove with it. Now, they could easily pivot to that story and say, we're not going to help you, kid. I just don't trust them to do that because this is the only story we've gotten with the entire Heritage Cup so right. far. And I didn't want Noam Dar to do that. Um, mm. Some of it was sloppy. Some of it was sloppy fun because it felt like they were trying to win the match the whole time, which that I right. always appreciate. Some of it was just bad camera angles. Like, they never... 
there were a ton of arm bars in this. And at no point could you see a single <laughs> locked in arm bar no. properly. Like, no. so some of it was just stuff like that, but uh, I hope there's a tremendous amount of guidance for Charlie Dempsey. Cause I think he's very good, but time limit technical wrestling is a, a very tricky thing to be able to do extremely well. So I just don't want him to be set up for something that's not great. Um, but I do think like, I like that we got Oba Femi winning really fast. I like that uh charlie dempsey won the cup here because it's it's nice to have some things that feel fresh and surprising and what's in such a predictable show so yeah. that part's cool i just don't want this to be a continual thing of like and then everybody interfered on his behalf like oh uh yeah. very happy for annoying to our face turn i have loved him unapologetically for a while and now everybody will be on my side as they should be right yep um I was right uh, always. Cyclo says, "What was what is Pete's du Pete Dunn's reaction to to Dempsey's big win?" Okay. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Um, so, right. at the beginning, um, Dragonov calls out the rodent, um, Carmelo Hayes. The rodent, and I just like okay. Did you call funny. him a disgusting rodent? I think a disgusting rodent. <laughs> a disgusting and, rat. That's what it was. No, he said rodent. He said rat. he said rodent, and that I was rolls. like, I've never heard anybody called me a rodent, which is very funny. Um, but some rodents are cute, you know. Like I believe uh, groundhogs, they're cute. I mean, cuter than rats. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, the vermin. <laughs> rabbits are rodents. Okay, like well, rabbits, rabbits are, are adorable. Rabbits are cute. So anyway, sometimes um, you, kind of cute. You disgusting little fluffy bunny, get out here right now! Um. So, uh, he um, rats are cute. Well, there we go. See, rats are know. cute. People say rats are cute. Rats are cute. No, rats are cute. They're so. disgusting. I lived in New York. You got to understand the rats that I was up against. It's they all were depends on the subway on, track, yeah, which, and they were this rat? big. <laughs> yeah, that's rats. Sure. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Milo comes out with a full brigade of security dudes, um, and is like, "I'm not coming in there, Ilya, until there's a contract for me to sign that has me versus you next week at Roadblock." And then, two um, security guys jump up on on the ramp on the uh, apron and get punched in the face and then the rest of them form a phalanx like a, like they circle the wagons around <laughs> around carmelo like this like as though they expect people to jump over the barricades and attack him which i thought was very funny um so we um we have our contract signing at the end of the night um and ilian and Melo are there they're quickly interrupt with ava they're quickly interrupted by uh, Tony D'Angelo. And Tony comes all the way down. He like... Um... Sorry, let's watch me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Alex. I just did a that, take well that, I'm really sorry about that. I am inhaler. We're sorry for the poor timing. We make no apologies for being so funny. I'm sorry. I hate We're sorry you happens. didn't inhale your asthma meds. Uh, that, <laughs> I'm also asthmatic. I hate when that happens. Um, so... Um, he comes in, he walks through because all also all the security guys are like standing around the ring on the apron. And he walks in and uh and he's and he stands there and's like uh uh gentlemen and lady. I just wanted to, he starts talking about um um that he's out here because I'm the Don and not just if you're him or if you're the NXT champion. Those aren't the only ways you can get things done around here. The Don can also get things done. And Melo's like, if you open your mouth one more time, I'm going to have my boys throw throw you out of the ring and escort you to the back. And um, Tony D's like, yeah, sure you are. And they all leave. Like, they were all plants. Like, he 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 got them in his pocket. That is some of the most, like, like mob-ass shit. We're like, <laughs> you... You thought your boys were working for you. Guess what? They actually work for me. Like, there's a few mob movies where they do that, and it's always the coolest shit. Like, like they're not loyal to you. They're loyal to me. Like, that was so cool. I love... That was one of the coolest 
character touches yes in a, in, a, in in a segment in wrestling that i've seen they just snap in their finger snap in his fingers and they all leave wordlessly they just get out and leave so which means carmelo doesn't have anybody to back him up that was really cool i really love that um but he's saying, he's saying like and this is true this whole mellow dragon of trick williams saga has been dominating the nxt championship picture for the last eight months and I think it's time for a change. Listen, I have a problem with that of you fellas. I like Trick. But this is it's time for some new blood. And that's the Don. So here's how it's going to go. Me versus Mello next week at Roadblock. And the winner gets Ilya Dragunov at Standing to Deliver. And Dragunov is like, that actually is cool. I would love to, I would love to see... Um, Mello actually earned something for one in his, once in his life. That was cool. That was um, a great line. And uh, and so there's a brawl after the contract. Is, is uh, the, there's a brawl here? He's like Tony's already signed the contract. Um, Ilya, if it's okay with you, this is what we're gonna do. All it needs is for Carmelo to sign the contract as well. So they have a little brawl. Um, I don't know why Dragonov was so close behind Tony. So when he cocks a fist back. He put he hits him in the nose with his elbow and then uh turns around and then Carmelo puts him to the table, signs the, the deal, drops the contract on his chest, picks up the the, the uh title, drops that on on Dragonov and, and leaves. So he's still got the upper hand, even though all his boys left, which I thought was uh good makes Carmelo seem like a threat. Um and here's what I think happens with this. I feel like Trick comes back next week to cost mellow so you get your tony d versus um dragonov match at stand and deliver and you also get trick versus mellow at stand and deliver in a one-on-one thing a grudge match all that stuff and if it were me i would have that be the last match in carmelo hayes's career in yeah. nxt losing to trick williams and then go like everyone was like oh man i can't wait to see match number four Versus Drag Dragonov versus Melo. Like, yeah, they're all really good. And the match, I'm sure, would be excellent. But, like, that's a lot of title matches between the same two guys in NXT. And too um, many of Ilya's reign. There's been, like, at that point, there will be, like, six or seven. And yeah. there he will have half of them. Uh, yeah. I also think we're pretty sure Melo's going to lose and go to the main roster. So right. don't waste a title shot on something that feels extremely obvious. That we've yep. seen three times before. Um, and Trick and Mello is so personal. And while it's been centered around the title, and I would like to see that paid off, I'm not mad about it being something to the side. And I also really like this trajectory for Tony D'Angelo. He was tag team champion. He's putting together the family. He's adding Luca Crucifino to this. Yep. Uh, we have Big Ange. That is her name. I don't care. Um like I, I like this was the direction that I would kind of wanted for Tony D almost after the Santos stuff. Like I thought this is where we were going. He didn't hate the tag stuff, but this is so much better of him being like, I'm calling the shots. I'm in charge around here. He's going to run yeah. rough shot over a lot of things in NXT in general, as I think we get there. I mm -hmm. loved dragging off being like, you actually want to work to get here. I respect that really, yeah. really good stuff in this. Whoever produced this segment can you produce the other segments? Everything made sense here. Yeah. Everybody yeah. came out of this looking strong. Like, Melo looked good. Dragunov looked yeah. good. Tony D looked great. Tony D needed it the most, and he probably looked the strongest in this. But everything made sense. Can you, Whoever this was, please do the rest of the show. Because this, yeah. this made the most sense of anything we've seen in a long time. <clears throat> For sure. Um, so Tony D versus Melo next week should be really great. Um, it, it's nice to see him on that level playing field with all the other guys, which is where he should have been. I think that that injury with him and Wesley, um, oh, and I'm a year ago now, kind of like really put a damper on what the plans were for him. Yeah. Uh, he finally has gotten back to that level as a, as a singles guy. Now he's going to lose to Dragunov, but it's going to be a really good match. I just want to see now what they do with him afterwards. He's he's got a full family now. He's got Crucifino, and so that's three. That's good. Honestly, you could call him up, and then they could become a part of the trios division on SmackDown. Trio like, and a girl every, division, and and they got a girl. So like it's three three guys that are girl. I don't girl. know. 
I don't. I was thinking like you could easily uh, pull Carmelo up and team him with Ashanti Diadonis and Cedric Alexander, who were doing a tag thing. And all of a sudden, that's three guys. You just need a girl for him. Not sure who that's going to be. Jada Parker. I don't know. But like, <laughs> you, you have you have a three girl, three guys in a girl division on SmackDown. There's a, there's a lot of cool stuff you could do. I personally think uh, there's a lot of stuff going on on SmackDown in only two hours. So so Melo yes. going to Raw is probably a better idea, but. Um, I agree. Yeah. I really liked all of this and it did make me like retroactively annoyed because I I think I actually really would have enjoyed if they had just <laughs> stayed the course with Tony D and Chase U. Me too. Like seeing this yeah, segment, I was like, yeah. if they just did this sooner and had the Chase U angle that we thought was gonna happen, it would have yeah. I actually think it would have been very fun and I would have had way less complaints about what was going on uh yeah. with, with Chase U. But Really good stuff. Really good stuff. They, Tony D'Angelo does an excellent job getting out of cartoonish world and into serious stuff. He just has a really good feel for mm-hmm. when to to power that on. But we were getting those segments where he was in jail and stuff. Like he was great at all that stuff. Good yeah. shit. Really good. Yes. Um, Shabugan says, "Are you saying he's a good hand, Kate?" I don't know who you were talking about the time but he said i don't know that. who i was talking about either I don't, know, I don't know alpha bill says your hair is pretty oh thank you alpha bill um me norma says uh kate your hair looks amazing alex knight hat <laughs> you do have a nice hat thank you and my hair um, does and, look good thank you. and alpha bill says i like the way alex turns words into sentence <laughs> do you do that like That's i need an example that's what, I don't know. I, mean, I'm, sure. I don't know. Words into he sent he sent it right after I I listed all the all the reasons why they're they're turning face. So I don't know. Oh, there you go. Um, all right. There's you probably lot. do. I just am fluent in Alex. Do you want me yeah, to read but, them? Are you okay? There's a lot of puns. Why don't Why don't um, Why don't I do a few and then then you can you can do the rest. Okay, you you drive for as long as you feel like driving. Then we'll get out. <laughs> we'll go to the gas station. We'll get some snacks. You'll probably get right. Sour Patch something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'll get some water like we're in Birdemic. <laughs> yeah, there you go. A lot of water. We need a lot of water. A like, lot of water. Like, oh, like, a lot. So much water. True Infamous says, I went to the library to get a medical book on abdominal pain. Somebody had ripped the appendix out. Ah. Uh, mm, that's good. Not a pun, but a um, great joke. Uh, Kim Gray says, good RX brothers. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Ian Riccoboni says, Tetanus Team 2000. Hell yeah. Chris Pereira says, Pediatric Surgeon. Whoop that, Whoop that pediatric surgeon is Whoop so that mean. Pediatric. <laughs> Whoop that pediatric. Um, Orion Ben says, Flintstones, Wendy, chewable vitamins. <laughs> when you Love, Fro- Love Fro says, House MD of Black. <laughs> I love Norm- that show. Meet Me- Norma says sky blue cross and the shield. Red cross okay. velvet. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Fono says king of the bum worms. Very nice. Gross, uh, but tr- nice. Tr- tr- Trunfamous says sur- surgeon slaughter. <laughs> if your surgeon is named slaughter, go to a different surgeon. Go to a different surgeon. Might just be unfortunate um, circumstances. But. Yeah. True infamous says Tylenol Dillinger. Meet Norma says. That was very funny. Sorry, I sneezed. (laughs) RX Truth. Cough Medicine Punk. (laughs) Vert Vert Vaccine. Vert Vaccine's really good. I like that. ENR says Depression X. Depression X. (laughs) Eczema Pack. Eczema Pack. Bronchitis breaker. That's very good. Very good. Ian R says Zach Labor Jr. Oh no, he's going into Zach Labor Jr. Um, that's very good. They also just um, that's been a thing because he's so liberal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Labor Ian Party. Ian R says Booker <laughs> T. Tuberculosis. All right, I'll take it. Tom the Valley says typhoid, not typhoon, but typhoid. <laughs> The shock therapy master, um, Cody's uncle. Right. That is, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but... Ric- Ricardo eats rice. Says rhinoplasty. I'm glad you're eating um, rice. 
Um, insert clever Tegan Knox pun says Tegan Anoxicillin. Anoxicillin. That might be your best Tegan specific pun because that's good. You you put those creative constraints on yourself. Lup- Lupongi Vice says John Tetanus. Not John Tenta, John Tetanus. That's very good. And also, what's the handle again? Lupongi, Lupongi Vice. Vice. Yeah. That's like pun handle, excellent uh-huh. pun. Uh-huh. Excellent word. Lupongi. Lupongi um, Chris Pereira says Layla Gray's Anatomy. Very good. Very good. Um, this is my favorite. Chris Pereira, you got this one. Oba Flemmy. <laughs> you win. There's nobody's gonna beat this one. I'm sorry. Who is um, my <coughs> next victim? <laughs> Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Photo says, "I swerve when I drive line fracture." Oh no! Um, Louisville that. says, "Doctor Who's house." Who's house? Doctor Who's house. Um, Jamal news. says, "Adam colonoscopy." Unfortunate, but Bo- Boris important. says. Money in the blood bank. <laughs> Tom LaValle says, It's all about the poo. Adam Cola guard, baby. <laughs> You've been uh, getting targeted with too many ads, sir. But. <laughs> no, uh, insert clever Tegan Knox pun. Tegan Chicken Knox. Oh, like Chicken Knox. Yeah, there you go. Uh, ENR says, IV Nile. Oh, that one's so good. Um, Louisville says pre metaphor, pre med, pre metaphor. Oh, metaphor, I got you. Mr. Darke says Oba Pharmacy. That's very good. L- Love Fro says R A F F L I N. That's rattling. <laughs> it's not really a pun, but all right. Um, this one I like a lot because I can I can do the the announcement. Tom the Valley says. Shin Splints Nakamura. That's very good. Um, uh, Chris Pereira says PhDDT. Very good. True Infamous says Tommy Endocrinologist. <laughs> Such a Lieutenant weird gimmick Colonel, for that guy. Le- Lieutenant Colonel Photo says Kevin Fluenza Owens. <laughs> um, Kevin uh, Fluenza is really good. <laughs> Ian R says Michael Colonic. Oh, rough, but well done. Um, Greg Cherry Brand says Anesthesia J. Very nice. Love you both, Kate. Love the hair. Love you, and so does um, my hair. True from it says so uh, Polio Sky or Polo Polio Sky. There we go. Polio Sky. The EO Sky. Polio Sky. Oh, okay. Um, Chris Pereira says stethoscope. Very nice. Ian R says um, Maxine do prescription. That's really good, but it also gives us a segue to this one that Greg Cherry just said mm. of Maxine do pre, which That's is That's great. That's great. Whoo! Oh good. Shot K29 says Nyquilia Dragonov. <laughs> Carmelo. <laughs> Carmelo Hives. Tama Tongue Exam. Ooh. Whose house? MD. Very nice. Shabugan says Okada hits the pacemaker. Not an XT, though. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Shabugan, Shabugan also says it's a shame watching Lexus King isn't elective. Um... Like elective surgery. Two Electric Mayhem oh. says Sarcoidosis Stucco. Sarcoidosis, Nico. Tendinitis O'Neill. Tendinitis O'Neill. Horror, horror, horror. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch. My, my elbow. Um, uh, Shabugan says triple, triple H, triple HH hemorrhoidectomy. Ooh. Yeah. Some nasty good procedures, good. but good puns. Yeah. Chris Pereira <laughs> says Owen heart surgery. Oh. Love Fro says Chelsea Gangrene. <laughs> Chelsea Gangrene. <laughs> Electric Mayhem says Harvey Snifflesman. Harvey Snifflesman. The podiatrist Nick Wayne. 
<laughs> Could um, be the podiatrist uh, Roxanne Perez too. Yeah. Um, Tama Valley says to save money, take El Generico medication. And <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel, right back to back, says El Generico medicine. So I like it. Trump I like those says, people vibe. Big E. Coli. <laughs> Ian I R. Says, Big E. Coli on our screen. Me too. Me too. Chase UTI. <laughs> Sounds painful. Um, True Infamous says, Rye bacterial meningitis. Meat Do Normus says, more. Meat norovirus can lead to meat madness. It's true. It's true. You got to be careful about that. Meat Normus says, Tom and Nick Listeria causes the shamrock shakes. <laughs> T Electric Mayhem says, Shin splint nakamorphine. That's and, very and, good. And Vertebrae Wyatt. Vertebrae Wyatt. That's Twitchmas says Anthony Vertigogo. That's very good. And uh, ENR says Big Angioplasty. Big Angioplasty. Yeah. It's going to be like Big Adriana Plasty next week. <laughs> yeah. All right. You have, a, you have a jukebox. I have a jukebox? You have a jukebox. Okay, at least it's still Tiffany. I'm gonna miss her. Just all on the main roster now, doing great. Kitty Ara says head cold Steve Austin. <laughs> I like that. <clears throat> These ads. Drowning deep in my sea of loathing, broken your servant, I kneel. Will you give in to me? It seems what's left of my human side is slowly changing in me. Will you give in to me? Looking at my own reflection when suddenly it changes. Violently it changes. No, there's no turning back now. You've woken up the demon in me. Get up. Come on. Get down with the sickness. Get up. Come down. <laughs> get up. Come on. Get down with the sickness. Get up. Come on. Get down with the sickness. Open up your hate and let it flow into me. Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Your mother, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Your something I can't say, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Madness is a gift that's been given to me. Toodles. Very good. And I only have one, Before, and it's Darby, so Alex that makes is me... down with the sickness. Yeah, I only have one, so we'll do that. Um, uh, There's one more pun. Mr. Showtime. Those. Says COVID nineteen three thousand. Okay, here we go. Um, Darby singing "Just Can't what? Get Enough" uh, from Two Electric Mayhem. When I'm with you, baby, I go out of my head, and I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. All the things you do to me and everything you said, I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. We slip and slide as we fall in love. And I just can't seem to get enough of Malachi Black. <laughs> we walk together. We're walking down the street. And I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. Every time I think of you, I know we have to meet. And I just can't get enough. I just can't get enough. It's getting hotter. It's a burning love. And I just can't seem to get enough of Brody King. Thanks. That's it. Sorry. Um, Anthrax Harward is very good. That is very um, good. Yeah, that's very good. All right, everybody. We will Sorry resume that... your normal jukebox mm. operations yes. next week, providing this yes. doesn't feel bad. But what I hope everyone takes away from this is how yes. much fun the jukebox is and how much you all miss it in its absence. Yes. And that you should think about that over the course of the next six days. Yes. yes. <laughs> and come yes. back with double the money and appreciation. <laughs> Pepsi hemophilia from Lieutenant Turtle. That's very good. Uh, right. Auburn Harry right. Kate gave you a teacher lecture at the end of that. But we do thank you for limiting yourselves to only one jukebox and it being the wrestler that Alex hates. It's like yeah, Jericho, but, huge gap, but yeah, Arby yeah. Allen. Yes, so, sure. um, yeah. <laughs> we will right. resume operations next week. And hey, Alex. 
Yes. I don't even know if you know this, but I asked what? Sean, so now I know. Yeah. Oh, very good. <laughs> we'll be on Fightful Select for the post show uh, for AEW Revolution, which makes me really happy because we get to be sillier behind the paywall. Good. So uh, if you want to hear us talk about AEW, uh, specifically Revolution, which has an incredible card coming up, which I'm very excited, including Sting's retirement match. Uh, yeah. please subscribe to Fightful Select and we will have an alternative post show to what is on the main. Uh, so I just wanted to let everybody else know that, including Alex, because I don't think we knew which station we were on. Until. You didn't know. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> now we yeah. know. Cool. Oh. All right. Thanks, everybody. Um, keep cool, gabagools. Toodles. Oh, wait, hold on. Tom, a tongue depressor from the punky voice. This hurts because we're ending on 68 puns. I know. You have you have twenty seconds to get another pun in to get to sixty nine. Twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Now we're now we are at fifteen seconds. Fourteen. Thirteen. Twelve. Eleven. Guys. Ten, come on. Nine. Let's do it. Eight. It's fine. I'll just ruin my day. Uh, Six. ALS oh! Snow. <laughs> Al's Snow from Tom LaValley. Thank you so much and good night. <laughs>